Welcome. Today we are going to work on back yoga. So this is yoga that is focusing on the back and we're going to, our first three poses today are going to look at how we can work the back from the front and then our last two poses are going to be how we work the back from the back. Today you have reached the seventh day of 30 days in this challenge. So you're deep in there. You're almost one third of the way through and I'm very, very happy to welcome you to your seventh day. So materials that you will need for today's session, bolsters. And as I've said before, most of us don't have yoga blocks. That's fine. Pillows will do just fine and we'll only need them for one pose. So have them standing by and then journal. You will need a journal to, if you're a journaler, to recommit. Remember, we're gonna recommit every day to the success of the commitment we made, of the devotion we made when we decided to do something different in our lives. What answer are you uh, struggling with? What question are you struggling with? What change in your life are you wanting to help manifest and move forward in your life through showing up and doing your life differently every morning for 30 days at sunrise? And for those of you who are not watching this at sunrise, thank you for joining me. This is a beginner's series, so I'm going to focus very much on the technique, and I'm going to always try to give three levels of poses so that you can start where you are and have somewhere to grow towards. Let's begin. Hold on. Is my little dog? Okay. He's choking. Hold on. Okay. So... First things first, as always, we're going to do the five Tibetan rituals. Let's get started. Two feet side by side, stacking your body. We know how to place our weight. That's from other videos. And we're going to let our shoulders pin down towards our heart, away from our ears, allowing the arms with their comfortable span, not doing this to get the arms up, in their wingspan before we have to hunch our shoulders and we're going to keep our arms straight our fingers are slightly activated our chin is parallel to the ground our eyes our our gaze is towards the ground and let's start spinning one two three four five Close your eyes, bring your body together. Let the spin catch you. Okay. For those of you who remember and want to try, we're gonna bring in the ujjayi breathing. It's gonna help create warmth in our body and it's going to um, emphasize the movement of the breath with each movement that we're taking with the pose. Fingertips pointing towards the ground, shoulders pinned towards the heart. And let's begin for our five. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. There's five. Now we're moving to J. We are going to, of course, start on the inhale. And our body's going to start in that lovely J. I'm going to support my back. You guys know why. You support your back if you need to. Let's begin. Inhale. little technical difficulty. My dog is joking. Okay, now we will go to the next pose, which is tabletop. 
Everything's parallel, pointing towards the short side of the mat. Fingertips, toes, all pointing in the same direction. Shoulders pinned towards the heart, away from the ears, bringing our body to flat, making sure to use that protective grip for our wrists. Don't forget, or please remember, let's keep the language positive, right? Starting at tabletop, and remember, you have a choice here, looking over your knees, looking at the sky, or letting the neck break and looking back behind you each time. This is your inhale. Wonderful. And our last one. We're going to begin an upward facing dog, protective grip for our hands. Our um, toes are facing, they're flipped forward, facing the short side of the mat, facing the hands. And we're gonna just let our body start, bringing our knees off of the ground. Let's begin, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. And remember to work at your level, not what I'm doing if that's not where you are. I'm going to do the last two at the beginner level. Okay, we have completed our five Tibetan rituals. We're warm. We're in equilibrium with the earth. We're in equilibrium with ourselves. And now we're ready to go into the first pose. When we're thinking about back, about back health, we often will think of strength first, but we have to remember that strength is nothing without flexibility. Always think of the reed along the river. It is much more useful than the branch of the strongest tree because that branch will break in the flood and the reed will anchor you as the flood, as the water flows by, you can hold on to it. So we have to let this back, our spine, our precious back, have that flexibility as well. And one of the best poses to demonstrate that is cat-cow. So cat-cow, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use the same hands that we just were using for um, upward facing dog and downward facing dog in the rituals. So we're going to make an L with our hands. From that L, our fingers unfold around it. That goes onto the ground, palming the basketball, creating that concave effect with our hands so that it makes like a mag, I mean, like a uh, vacuum with the palms. And that push and that push against the earth is going to, that active push against the earth is going to support our wrists which is preparing us for a handstand, or if not a handstand, for sustainability and longevity in our practice. I can't tell you how many people in yoga have carpal tunnel syndrome because they don't protect their wrists and they have to stop for a few months and fix it. Okay, so preventative action, right? The eyes of our elbows are going to face the short front, the short side of the mat, and our knees we're gonna be back in tabletop. Our back is gonna be flat. Our knees are gonna be parallel uh, to each other and hip width apart. If you're not sure where hip width is, that is when you put two of your, your wrists together between your knees so that everything kind of just perfectly touches together, not squeezes, there's no space, and that is the width of your hips. Okay, so we're in tabletop and we're going to and remember, we're rotating. I love that spiral. You know, I'm obsessed with that spiral. I talk about it every day. We're going to inhale. And as we inhale, our middle back and thoracic spine is going to move towards the ground. That means the top of our butt is going to point towards the sky. 
And our head is going to do the same so that our gaze, our eyes point up, 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 up. But as our eyes move up, our shoulders continue to maintain, to do what they're supposed to do, which is stay pinned towards the heart. They are the heart's bodyguards and they stay attached to the heart, not to the ears. Inhale, our heart is moving closer and closer to the earth as is our thoracic and middle spine, inhaling. And now you're in cow. So from here, we're going to go into cat. Exhale, thinking about that range of motion, that full range of motion for your forehead, for your eyes, for your neck. Exhale, everything that was pointing down up is now gonna point down. So the our eyes gaze, they're gonna end up gazing through our knees. Our forehead's gonna to point towards the ground. Our middle back is going to point up, 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 up to the sky. And our butt is going to point down. That's your cat. <laughs> that shouldn't be funny to me, I'm silly. Okay, inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Constantly practicing vigilance, readjusting your arms, your legs, your knees, your grip as you need to. Last one, inhale, cat. Exhale, cow. By working slow, to go fast. You get to feel every point in that pose. And as you get stronger, and as you get consistent, you're going to feel more in each pose. Um, it's like a piano. You're going to sensitize to the different keys and suddenly the sharps and the flats, you'll hear the difference. The more you play, the stronger you get, the more sophisticated your palette becomes. So Remember to let yourself have every moment. Don't rush to the peaks and valleys of each pose. Breathe with it and stay with it. And um, let's go to the next pose. So the next one is Sphinx pose. Now our upper back is really nice and warm. And that puts us in a really good position. In contrast to cat cow, which is a vinyasa flow like benchmark like it's just something that you're always going to do typically do in vinyasa sphinx pose is a yin pose and i believe we might have even done it yesterday it's going to push you out of the way okay you stay there so for sphinx pose to get into sphinx pose we're going to still use that active grip for our hands the l the fingers unfold excuse me and we're going to start laying down and we're going to let our body, our toes, since this is a more active, this is not yin today, we're gonna feel that zip between the tips of our toes and our legs, and they're gonna stay together. Just to start, just to feel the difference, and eventually as we settle into the pose, our legs are going to comfortably separate without rotating the hips open. They're gonna stay so that the knees are kissing the ground, the tops of the feet are kissing the ground, the bottoms of the feet are facing the sky. Our hands are gonna be on either side of our shoulders. Right now our forehead, our third eye, is kissing the ground. And from here, we're just going to extend our forearms up, raising our head, and we're going to be just like a sphinx, so now our forearms are about, they are about the same, on the same plane 
as our heart. So if we were laying down, our heart would and forearms would all be on the same line, our elbows. Shoulders are pinned back. And I want you to work your way up. So let me show you where you're going. So look at the screen. This is where you're going, not here, not here. Uh, you're finishing the line, you're extending the line, the natural line. So the gaze is towards the ground and you're going to go here. You're going to go this high, but I'd like you to work your way up. So for Sphinx, you're just going to crawl up. And when you start to feel resistance, where you're losing the integrity of the pose, where your shoulders are getting, um, are crunching up towards your ears, or you're feeling weak and, you're, and it feels like you can't really hold it there, then go lower. The lower you are to the ground, the easier any pose is gonna be. And just breathe here. And as I promised, we'll start with our legs zipped together. And as you settle into the pose, you can slightly let your legs separate naturally, but just don't um, let them turn in more than turning out. Some of us with natural uh, turnout will want to go the other way. And that is a pose, but it's not what we're doing right now. It's a choice, but I, I want to do something um, different from that. Keeping that activation in the hands, it's a slight activation. Our forearms are doing a bit of work, but our back is doing the most work. Our core, my core is not doing anything. My back's doing the work here. I'm pushing against the ground. Our core could do the work. But most of us have, especially if we do other workouts, we typically have overdeveloped cores. And that's part of what makes us hunch our shoulders. The core is literally pulling us, binding us, winding us towards itself. And think about your butt. Are you holding it? Are you using your butt right now? Try not to. Try to put it all on the back. We only have a few more seconds here. But to try to have a nice relaxed backside, except for your back, which is doing work. I'm checking the time. And are you breathing, right? <sighs> Okay, so from here, let's just do a nice transition moment. I want you to bring your whole body to flat on the ground. And I'd like you to bring your left ear to the ground. Bring your hands to either side of your body. Let your shoulders round towards the ground. And let's just neutralize our spine for a moment. And then let's take the other side, right here on the ground. <sighs> it might feel differently. There are different processes happening. Some happen more easily left side facing and some happen more easily right side facing. Okay, let's go into the next pose. I gave you a little rest because this one is one that you know very well, but it's quite active. It is something we use in vinyasa flow all the time, but it's actually my very first, very first yoga class was power yoga with Mark Blanchard. And he said that downward facing dog is actually a resting pose. And your goal is to gather the strength to be able to have it feel like a rest. <laughs> Ooh, um, I never got to that place, but 
um, there's always tomorrow, right? So we're going to keep the same grip. We're going to start in tabletop and we're going to push into our hands very strongly. Now, this is a great chance to prep yourself for the eyes of the elbows to face the front side, the short side of the mat, to face your fingers and to start with that squareness. Shoulders are pinned towards the heart. The eyes of the elbows are going to start there, bending them towards each other. Go ahead and flip the toes. And we're going to push back and we're going to push up into downward facing dog and try to keep the eyes of the elbows facing the fingers. Try to keep that twist. When you keep that twist, the shoulders by default are going to stay pinned to the towards the heart, which is a super cool advantage. Super cool. Like the more you focus on this spiral, the more. Um in alignment, in technical alignment, you become. And it's not that your my eyes and my elbows do not naturally slide into this position. It actually takes effort. There is tension that I'm creating. It's just a positive tension. It's a tension that helps um, motivate strength. So we're pushing. We're literally pushing our front body away from our hands, away from the ground. And we're thinking about, in Downward Facing Dog, we're thinking about pushing with our front body away from the ground. And we're thinking about pushing against, in the same way, pushing our heels towards the ground. My heels aren't reaching the ground. So something you can do is actually add a pillow so that you, until your heels reach the ground, you can actually rest your heels on a pillow so that you have that extra contact with the earth, it's going to help your body relax and um, into the pose more easily. And then as time goes by and your heels start to relax towards the ground, you can remove the pillow. Um, so your heels are spiraling towards the ground as well. And they're pushing away from the ground. And as you push, it's going to push your butt to be the top of the triangle. That's the top of the triangle. Shoulders are away from the ears. Gaze is through the knees. Shake your head yes. Shake your head no. Yes. No. Oh, help me bring everything together. Okay. And one more strong push. Push in both directions. Push, 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 push. Push those heels towards the ground. Very good. Okay, come back to tabletop. Walk your knees. Walk, 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 walk your knees through your hands. Have a seat. Shift your seat. Shift your seat to the right. And we're going to go to bridge. So for bridge pose, our feet are flat on the ground. They're facing the short side of the mat. And we're going to lower ourselves down. So as we lower ourselves down, we're going to just grab onto our body so we can roll down the spine the way that we would if we were rolling up the spine to stand. And in bridge, our feet are flat on the ground. And where we're going is we want to eventually have our shoulder tips as the top of this beam that we're going to make with our arms and our hands. So we're going to just push into the ground and lift our hips towards the sky. And here you're welcome to add a pillow if this is already feeling like a bit much. But eventually we're going to lift our hip towards the sky so that we make a slide. We make a nice triangle slide with our hips. If I had a tennis ball, it would just roll perfectly down my knee and off up, down my knee, across my belly, up my chest and off of my shoulder. That's the slide we're making. But it's OK if right now the tennis ball would kind of stop <laughs> at your hips. That's fine. We're going to bring our two hands together. Right now I'm balancing on my shoulders. Okay, so my shoulder bones are pushing into the ground. That's why yoga mats are really nice. And something that wants to happen here, just even before we go all the way into the pose, is that our knees are going to want to splay out. They're going to want to move towards the long sides of the mat. 
We want to control that. And in order to do that, you're going to emphasize and be intentional about your knees moving towards each other without smashing them together. It's actually also really hard to keep them together. But just having that energy, that intention of the knees moving towards each other to keep that parallel position. Our two hands are going to come together underneath. They're going to clasp. Our wrists are going to kiss. Our wrists are going to kiss. This is not, this is not an option. I go to so many classes and it's not cued. This is super important. Our wrists are going to stay together. We're going to clasp our hands and they're going to stay together under our body. They're not going to go apart so that only our fingers are touching. The whole hand is going to stay together. We're going to bring our wrists and hands and fingers together. They're going to clasp. By bringing them together immediately, we feel support. We feel, hey, my back's not, my shoulders aren't just balancing, holding my weight. My upper arms are holding my weight. They are. And you're going to make a beam, that beam I was talking about, all the way from the flat side of your pinky fingers that are in that bind with each other, feeling the wrist pointing, point, uh, touching the ground, feeling the lower arm touching the ground, feeling the elbow touching the ground, feeling the upper arm touching the ground. And the stronger you make this beam, the easier it is to push away from the ground and push the front side body towards the sky. The gaze of the eyes is towards the sky. And we are in bridge pose. You are welcome to unbind the hands and actually hold your body up with your wrists and put them under your butt to heighten the pose. This is a supported bridge. This is not an excuse to bring your shoulders up to your ears. So whether you're in bridge or supported bridge, you're breathing. <laughs> For those of you who have the bind, please unbind your fingers and bind them the other direction. We wanna give both sides of the body a chance to feel themselves and to feel the work and for you to feel the difference. How does it feel? What does that aggravate? What does that uncover for you? When you bind the wrists with the different thumbs on top. Okay. And let's lower, unbind the wrists, let the seat lower between the hands and the arms. Let the hands rotate out to the long sides of the mat. Let the belly rise, inhale. Let the belly fall, exhale. I'm gonna take this one more time, but it's gonna be a lightning round of bridge. Okay, so push into the feet, bring the hands together or support your bridge and take your first clasp. Think about which thumb is on top. The stronger you make that beam of arms touching the ground and switch grip, the stronger you make that beam, the easier it is to push up and away with your front side body towards the sky. Working the lower back. So we've worked the top, middle, and lower back. Bring everything down, let it melt to the ground, unclasp your hands. And our final back pose is dead bug pose. We're going to start with our feet flat on the ground and I recommend doing one leg at a time. So you're just gonna bring that leg up to the sky and our back is flat on the ground. So I even had to make a slight adjustment so that my whole body, my whole back was on the ground. And we're gonna bring the first leg up to the sky. We're gonna bring the second leg up to the sky. And rather than the feet being, the legs being straight, they're gonna have that slight bend that I want you to have in every standing pose as well. We're gonna bring our arms, they're all parallel. So our hands are, Mildly activated, so they're not limp, but they're mildly activated without being straight, pointing fingertips pointing towards the sky. And they're going to, when we bring our hands up, our arms are going to naturally relax into the shoulder sockets. Sockets. We want that. And now I want you to move your legs and your hands back and forth until you find there's a point of no effort. 
if your legs are shaking, well, they might shake because if you haven't done this pose before, but there's a place where your body will find equilibrium. And it's as if you could hold this pose for years because you're not efforting. I want you to find that place. It does exist. Keep looking if you don't find it. It's, there's one place for the legs and one place for the arms. And the more you visit this pose, the easier it is to find this place of balance. It is such a cool feeling. And what's happening is that your spine is settling into itself. After the work that we've done, this is so helpful to do at the end of a yoga class, anyone, yang or yin, vinyasa or hatha or ashtanga or bikram, whatever you're going to do. All that work, this is almost like shavasana, except shavasana can actually be a bit of a strain on certain parts of the body. Some people, like myself, can't hold shavasana for long periods of time. This I can hold. And what you're doing is you're pinning the body at these four points, the two points where the hip bones touch the ground, the two points where the shoulders touch the ground. And in the, that anchoring, the spine can find its way. Gravity can help the spine anchor and really relax. And for this moment in time, the spine is doing nothing and the body is holding it. The earth is holding it. And the spine can say, ooh, that feels good. Oh, I want to be a little over here, a little over here. And you're helping the spine find its balance. Okay. Slowly make your way down. Climb one foot down. Climb the other foot down. Climb one arm down. Climb the other arm down. Shift your weight to the right so that you are in fetal position. We're going to shift to the right because we're going into our day. We would shift to the left if we were going to go to sleep. You're going to shift. We're in fetal pose. You're going to push onto the ground, push away from the ground with your left hand. Push up, 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 up with your body. Let's come to easy pose. In German, this is called um, the tailor's pose. So I guess the tailor sits and sews. <laughs> In this position, this is easy pose for us. Support your hips if you need to. I would love doing, I love supporting my hips. <sighs> Choose your position for your hands. Are you grounding? Are you both? Are you receiving? Notice where you are today. If you haven't already, write out your recommitment for these 30 days. Remember why you're here. Remember, this is a challenge. And showing up is most of it, even if you show up and go to sleep on the mat. I've been to, I've done many yoga challenges where <laughs> we have to be in the class at 5.45 in the morning and people will show up because they're like, I'm here and they'll go to sleep. And it's perfectly acceptable. They're on the mat. <laughs> Let your eyes close. Look and feel within the world that you have helped build already. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for joining us today. Eyes open, hands to the heart. Thank you. I'm wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. I'll see you tomorrow.